Hi there, Mathe from Parley Wireless. If you follow the Parley Wireless blog, you're going to notice that I've so far I've done uh, tutorials and how-tos on the BlackBerry, but I haven't really touched any of the other smartphones. Now, why is that? Well, I'm hoping to do other smartphones soon, but I really wanted to stick with what I knew first and then maybe try to figure out what other smartphones I wanted to touch and and show some cool things that we can do that uh, you might know not know how to do. Um, why am, why do I want to stick to smartphones and not go to normal phones and do how-tos and tutorials on that? Well, it's it's actually pretty simple. Uh, the fact being that smartphones are a little bit more complicated to get um, under your control or, or tame, if you will, than, than normal phones. Normal phones are pretty straightforward uh, in, tho in that sense. Now, a lot of people um, have also been asking what is the difference between a normal phone and a smartphone? Well, there are a lot of different definitions, um, but the one I like the most is a phone that's capable of multitasking and cap capable of having external applications that can run on it. So in that sense, it becomes much more like a computer than a phone. Um, what I wanted to cover today um, is multitasking on a phone, on a smartphone. Now, not too long ago, I think it was last week, Apple has announced that it was launching OS 4.0, so it's a new operating system for their iPhone. It's going to be capable of running on the iPhone 3GS. It will not be compatible with the iPhone 3G. The big upgrade on this operating system is the capability of doing multitasking on the iPhone now. Multitasking has been available on the iPhone, um, but only for internal applications such as uh, the calculator and the compass and the maps. Those are all iPhone specific programs that were already there, but if you download other applications and you wanted to do two things at a different time, uh, you weren't able to do that. Now that's something that BlackBerry has had for quite a while and it's something that's been somewhat of a frustration for most users because um, when on the BlackBerry when you press the end key you think okay well I'm shutting down my application but no it's actually still running on the on, in the background and a lot of people a lot of, of what we hear in store is that well I, how, do, how do I close this how do I make sure that my phone's um, up to speed and a lot of clients come in saying well I have the hourglass of doom which is a, a really interesting term uh, in my opinion um, the hourglass of doom that you know my phone freezes for half an hour and I miss calls and I miss emails and it's 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 driving my production productivity down whereas a smartphone should raise your productivity it should help you it shouldn't hinder you so I wanted to cover a little bit uh, of, of tips and tricks on how to keep your your BlackBerry healthy. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so I have two BlackBerries today that I'm going to be working with. Uh, I have the Storm 2 and the Curve 8330 red. Um, I wanted to use two BlackBerries today because they both have different ways of shutting down applications and, and whatnot. Um, I want to start by the Curve because it uh, most resembles uh, the BlackBerry that a lot of people have. Uh, so this is the Curve. Um, you're going to see that it's quite fast right now. I just booted it up. It, this is actually a clean install um, of, uh, of a BlackBerry. So it's, it's really clean. There's not much in there. It's really, really fast. So that's good. This is, this is something that we want. Um, a shortcut key that not a, peop a lot of people know about and that I personally discovered not too long ago actually um, if you actually press the alt back button so you press you keep your finger on the alt button here and you press back you're gonna see a taskbar show up it's kind of like doing an alt tab on your uh, PC at home okay so on my finger is still on the alt and I can scroll left and right and you're gonna see that there's five basic applications that are already open even though I just opened my phone so messages blackberry messenger home screen browser and call log okay so this is um, an easy way to navigate your com your computer, your smartphone. Uh, so if I wanted to jump directly to the browser, I can do that. Press Alt back, and I can jump quickly to BlackBerry Messenger. 
Well, that's a, a, a nice um, way of getting around. I wanted to show you that because that also tells you which applications are open. So, say I decide to play a little game of Pac-Man. So I go into Pac-Man and I decide I'm going to play a new game and whatnot. And ends up, well, I don't really want to play it, so I press the end key and I go back to my main screen. Contrary to popular belief, Pac-Man is not closed right now. It's r still running in the background. If I press Alt back, you're going to see the icon right there, the Pac-Man icon. It's still there. It's still running. If I, if I click on that, I jump right back where I was in the middle of my game. So, again, Alt back and I can see exactly all the applications that are open. So Pac-Man, if I really wanted to shut it down, I have to press the menu button and press close. Now, if I press Alt back, you're going to notice it's not there anymore. Now, one application might not seem too bad, um, but I wanted to show you my Storm 2 here. Uh, on the Storm 2, you can do the same thing by pressing and holding the menu button. So if I press and hold the menu button, you see I have a list here that appears and you're gonna see that the list here has a lot a lot of open applications so I've got pixelated, I've got the maps that are open I've got uh, my calculator is open I've got uh, weather, I've got MSN, these are all open applications right now and they're all taking space in my computer, uh, in my phone um, I like to compare having multiple open applications to uh, a highway during rush hour or right at the beginning of rush hour um, on a highway you're gonna hit a critical state where you have right the, the, the good amount of cars for everybody to go at the speed limit and then you add a couple cars in and everything bogs down it's the same with uh, a phone because there's overhead necessary just to keep the phone running um, you know you can open five six seven applications without having anything uh, blocked down but as soon as you open the 8th and 9th well everything shuts down and that's when you get the hourglass of doom um, where where your phone is just trying to do so many things at the same time that it accomplishes doing nothing at all so that's something to watch out for now the easiest way to to close an application um, on the storm same thing say I go to, to pixelated I press menu and I press close and now it should be gone. See now it's closed. It's not in my list anymore. So it's important to really close down the applications that you don't use anymore, like ca calculator. Uh, well, I don't need that right now, so I'm going to close it down. Um, and not just and not just when you're in, in an application, uh, not to press just the the end key because that's just going to minimize it. If you ref if you if I refer to it in a computer term, it's just going to minimize it. It's not going to close it down. So that's the big difference there.